Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. He's ushered in a new era of creativity for a whole generation. Lego, Lego, Lego. Lego. So she's half cow, half robot. Yeah. Yes. It's a cowboy. Hello, Internet. Today is May 5th, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk movies, TV, things we watch on screens in front of our faces, wherever we are. I'm your host, Malengo, at Rambling Mango, and as usual, we have Sorg of Sorgatron Media. I am around. Yes. <laughs> you are around. I'm, I am in the, in the studio. Where else would I be? Here in Pittsburgh, PA, as are you, in another section of town across a bridge or two. For Another instance, location mm-hmm. undisclosed. Talking movies. Back to the core group is what this yeah. is. Everybody else is on assignment of some sort tonight. So uh, very excited yeah. to talk movies and one movie in particular, especially. Yes, yes. A- a- Ashley still has not even seen this movie. So she I seems don't know like when... she's a busy person. Yeah, that's, I mean, I guess that's the caveat of her job, right? She gets to travel, but she misses. That's right. And I don't even know what she does, which uh, based on how much traveling she's done, I'm guessing she's a salesperson. Uh, no, she kills people for a living. Oh, of course. Anyways, we'll get to that mystery later. And now you guys will not see me anymore because now she will kill me. Mm. Um, yes, and I don't know where Mad Mike is. Uh, I forget what he said. We what should punish but he, him. But he did send an email, so he does have thoughts on Avengers for, to share with us. Of course he does. But he let's prob- get into the show. He probably loved it. So what was our trailer of the week? <laughs> our trailer of the week uh, was actually... The uh, the brick um, uh, Lego brickumentary, of course, Lego in the movies is a big thing, and and it really is I think at the height of the Lego brand right now with video games and so much more, and uh, yeah. and I think this is the kind of I'm not the culmination of it, but I think this is appropriate, and um, this is uh, uh, this is narrated by Jason Bateman, I believe, off the top of my head, and uh, in in Lego Man form. So I'm very excited about that. So there is a little bit of illustration there. Some, uh, you know, not not high end, of course, like the movies that you're used to, but um, you know, a little bit of a crude uh, uh, Lego Brickman kind of uh, situation there. But it is about Lego and what it is and what people are making with them. And if you saw the documentary, uh, uh, the 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 uh, the trailer, like there's people making full size replica uh, X wing fighters. It's crazy. Yeah. And 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 um, what's one guy made a house out of it? You know. Really looking forward to this. It's about the culture. Did you know? I found a picture of this. Uh, I, may, I took a picture of this. Apparently down in the culture district, they have this set up um, in one of the buildings. Uh, you know there's a Lego, a Steel City Lego club? I, I am not surprised by that. No, no. Well, I, I, the, the, yeah. Uh, but then they had a, uh, uh, I forget what all they had there, but they had something built and they had a little Lego thing and everything. And it was really cool. So, um, I mean, this is big and it's a big cultural thing. And I think it's going to be a really fun documentary. Yeah, I mean, I was reading the bio on uh, the one that um, trailers.apple.com have. If you thought you knew the world of Lego, you don't know Brick. Step inside the amazing real-life world of the global phenomenon that will captivate oh fans of all ages. Oh, wow. Uh, good for Lego. I, I do like documentaries, though, so I'm pretty excited about this. Although, um, I do not play with Legos anymore. I do. My daughter isn't into that, so I'm I'm delegated to toy houses and Barbie dolls. Build her a toy house and Elmos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (sighs) What's going on at the box office? As if I should even ask. Yeah, uh, the box office this weekend was Avengers. Uh, It was kind of interesting though, because on another podcast that we uh, watch or listen to, they were thinking that this would actually top off at 200 million it almost got there pulled in 191.2 million dollars in the opening weekend box office that's pretty good if, if i mean my humble opinion uh, yeah considering the second with furious seven um was uh six million and yeah. down that even down sixty percent. The next movie down fifty percent. The next movie down sixty percent, fifty percent. That that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty significant. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, even even another, if you're a numbers person, just to mm-hmm. put it in perspective, this movie made more than like it, <laughs> the, the rest of the top gross, ten combined. <laughs> yeah. The total gross so far of um Furious Seven is three hundred and thirty one uh million. I don't know if that's worldwide. I'm assuming that's domestic. But in comparison to Avengers, Avengers was only a hundred million off from that. So that's that's crazy. But yeah, that's the second movie uh was yeah, Iris. I don't even know what that is. But that was all the way down at number like that's not even in the top eleven. So it's not even worth talking about. Yeah, Jeez. Avengers. That was the movie everyone wants to see. Yep. Basically, basically. And we'll we'll talk a good bit about it. Are we gonna do that now or you wanna do that later in the show? Let's do that later in the show because I I had a lot of people that came up to talk to me about their opinions of Avengers. Okay, yeah, we'll get a little I, spoilery here in the show. This will be the what we watch segment probably for the show then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I think the first story we should talk about is a movie that you went to see and I went to see and we enjoyed it quite nicely. Mm-hmm. John Wick 2. Keanu Reeves is coming back with the director, uh, David David Leach and I... Uh, um, Chad, yeah, Chad Stahelski. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just gonna say everybody's coming back. There was actually, I think ING is the one that uh, released this this uh, story, mm-hmm. but uh, they have a video up on it, and they said that yeah, they all got in a room and they're like, we have a lot of uh, additional content that we can do for this, so we're gonna do it. Like, yeah. And um, it, it's funny because the the joke, uh, my programmer buddy and I were kind of looking at this trailer. The joke is, you know, are they going to go along the same path that they did with the first movie? Because, I mean, the dog dies and then he goes crazy. So we can't have another dog dying, right? But maybe a this goldfish. Time, yeah, dies. I was going to say, it's going to be a goldfish this time. <laughs> yeah. Something's going to set him off, right? So, I mean, I, I think, you know, they'll have something a little more than that. Maybe, you know, something else from his past. You know, they'll, they'll figure it yeah. out. But I love this film. I love the first one, the con- the pit, the the pit, gun food uh, that they did through this movie. Uh, I thought it was really interesting. A lot of really fun sequences. Like really, it's very violent, of course, but uh, just a fun, fun show. And, and I really, I was really into it. Uh, and I was really surprised how good it was. It's one I picked up on a free, uh, uh, you know, a free thing on um, um, on uh, Google Play, you know. And, uh, and and I think it's worth checking out if you guys see it on HBO or Netflix or wherever it ends up. Um, I'm looking forward to it for sure. For sure. We had some comments because uh, I, I posted this over on the uh, on the group, the Facebook group for Rambling Movie Minute. You can join us over there and give your comments. And uh, mostly, you know, uh, uh, Kyle said he was pumped. It was, it, it, you know, it was, it was really good. Uh, uh, Rick in there uh, saying he's hoped the sequels don't sequels don't nosedive like the Matrix. I counter with if uh, we get another Dragon Ball Z type uh, ending with this, I'm completely into it. So, <laughs> well, the the funny thing is, you know how we were kind of gushing over Daredevil in their fight sequence. Yes, I wonder if I don't. I mean, I'm not saying that that could be like this is what was from that. But if you notice, maybe that's why we like John Wick so much. Like Keanu Reeves went back to what he should have been doing anyway. Does very minimal uh, speaking and just action, 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 which is why a lot of people. I would say a lot of people might have liked the first Matrix, but the fighting style in John Wick is kind of similar to Daredevil. It's very gritty, kind of in your face, very that, that, close That's up. true, that's true. And I think Matrix really introduced a version of that kind of, you know, wire foo kind of thing. Plus, it was so imaginative, and it was a new concept for the time, and there was a mystery about it, too. And I think that's yeah. what you lost a lot in the sequels, was there was no more mystery. We kind of knew what everything was about, even though there was a lot more about the world to discover, and they really kind of just, like, opened the book and said, here it is, you know, and and, and I thought they didn't really maybe pace that so well. So, um, but this is, I don't think there's anything like this. This is all about the violence, for the most part, you know? I mean, it's, it's a mob film, for the most part. Um, but it's also, it's bringing a new kind of style and i think that's what's kind of captured a, a little bit of imagination there definitely uh speaking of capturing imagination uh, a new indiana jones movie confirmed by kathleen kennedy um so this is uh so this is now a disney film right well i believe disney 
They got they, everything LucasArts. So. so this is now yeah. a Div- <laughs> this is now a Disney property. Yep. I'm not mad. I I don't I think I am mad. There's certain movies of our past of our childhood that I kind of feel should just be left alone. And I think this is one of them. Like they already tried this attempt with a really annoying kid who I can't remember from um Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf. And and that just people just went crazy over that. They're like, "Why did we do this?" You know, this this did not need to happen. So bringing it back again for what they're saying is the fifth movie in the series, even though Spielberg's coming back to direct it, so maybe you know that fixes some things. But it's kind of like I don't know. It's almost like the resurgence of um, like I I, I don't think. Let's see. The story is saying that uh, Chris <laughs> Chris Pratt might be picking up the whip. Yeah, that better not be true either, because he, it will be the exact same role that he's been playing. That he's going to be playing in Jurassic World. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I I think I need to see more of this. I need to know more about what's really going on. Right. 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 I, it's interesting. I, I, you know, considering what they're doing, Star Wars. I think they're doing the right by right Star Wars uh, so far, but it's such a delicate thing for them to do. Um, I think, I think they tried to do something with that last one, but I think, I think there's a lot of franchises that pinned our hopes on Shia LaBeouf that didn't pan out. Um, yeah. And in uh, and, and mind you, that, Star Wars, though. Yeah. I mean, yes, I guess you're you're right because with Indiana Jones, they did. It wasn't a revamp. It was a continuation. Star Wars though had a lot of source material that they could go with, which they can. They can it all, so they can really go yeah. any way they want to, right? Um, you know, aside from you know what they did with Star Trek, where they just completely rebooted in chronology. By the way, they rebooted, they retconned, but still, the rest of your Star Wars or your Star Trek uh, exists. You know, in this pocket universe over here, I mean, like it's not dead; it's just misplaced. And and it opens it up to do so many interesting things moving forward. So, um, so with with Indiana Jones, I can't see them doing anything other unless it's a complete complete reboot, which I doubt. It would have to be. I doubt. I think Chris Pratt is the same character that you saw Shia LaBeouf as. Uh, and I think because remember, it. like Harrison Ford was the only thing that even helped that fourth movie, and you can't bank on. I mean. I'm surprised Harrison Ford isn't being like trotted around on strings right now. You know what? He was great. What was the film with um, with the Hemsworth brother? Where, jeez, uh, I am so sorry. It was they did a film a couple years ago with him and, and Hemsworth. And uh, oh, are you talking about um, Ender Game? No, no, but I, I haven't seen Ender Game either. But uh, but no, it was it was about a, a guy that was uh, I think it was a software uh, guy, maybe a hacker or something like that. And they they pitted him against this other big time uh, technology guy. And uh, wow, yeah, I'm a great movie description. I know, uh, but uh, but no, I thought I thought he was great in that one. So <laughs> why not? No, I think it's Harrison Ford still got a lot of uh, a lot into him. You know, as long as he stops crashing planes into golf courses. Trip. Oh, he was also in Expendables three, but that <gasps> that was just kind of like a Expendables three a was nod. so good for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah, it was though. It was a lot of fun. Like it was, it was exactly what that movie needs to be. Right? I mean, just an un unapologetic action movie orgy with all these guys that should not belong in a movie together. So. Uh, but uh, speaking of great actors that should go into as many things as possible, Martin Freeman joins ways. Captain America: Civil War. Yes, um, they this... don't really know what he'll be playing yet. Mm-hmm. That hasn't been that hasn't been uh, released. But uh, he will be with Cumberbatch, I believe, which is odd but intriguing. Wait, wait what is Cumberbatch? Is Cumberbatch in the same movie as well? I don't. So when I was reading this article, I think it was in the comments. Somebody said that uh, both of these people would now be in the Marvel Universe. I don't remember if Cumberbatch was going to be... I don't think he was going to be in the uh, the Civil War movie with or the Captain America no, movie. No, he's actually in negotiations played Doctor Strange himself. That's what it was. So, so he, But still, both, I don't know them, how that ties. But still both, care, both of these actors from, from... Both of them did the Hobbit movies too, didn't they? Didn't Cumberbatch played the voice of Schmog, I thought. 
Did he? I'm I, I, not sure I think about. so. I'll go check that out. We have internet. But uh, what do you think about this? I mean, he's what a great actor. Internet? He's all over the place. Um, both these guys, all over the place, doing great movies and popping up in franchises like Star Trek and Hobbit and, and who knows what else these days. Um, I Good for the both of them. Yeah, no, definitely good for them. And I mean, this, the, as we'll talk about uh, in, our, in our next segment, um, with the way the Marvel Universe is going, like I'm thinking sooner or later, some of these movies are going to start dropping the ball. And I like him being picked up for something like this. I think Civil War has a tendency to be a really good story. Mm-hmm. And with that comes really good uh, character actors. With that and comes it, really big responsibility. Yes. So I, I think he he's a good pickup for whatever they're going to do, especially the, the direction, the way the Captain America movies have been going, where it's like on political issues and social issues. Right. Like, and with the story, if it's the storyline from the comic books for the Civil War, like, yeah, I think there's a lot. It'll be a that, version you know. of this, just like, you know, we're getting into this in a moment, but just like the Age of Ultron is not the Age of Ultron you you read uh age of ultron in the comic books was actually a a parallel time frame uh that happened because of something ultron did and we have involved wolverine all this other kind of stuff um we just this was just we called it that we had ultron and we had we had this thing happen so um it sounded like it really kind of attributed to early ultron from what i'm reading i've never read much ultron involvement in avengers or anything like that so but anyways do we want to get into that then next we should just before we get into that. Did you see the picture for Suicide Squad? I did. This is going around. I saw first his Instagram. Of course, Will Smith as Deadshot. Um, the Harley Quinn characters in there. A whole bunch of other guys. Uh, some jokes have been going around that it looks like uh, CM Punk has one of these. <laughs> so yeah, uh, one of these characters. It looks interesting. I, I, you know, I, I'll believe it. You know, it looks better. It looks more promising to me than the Jared Leto as the Joker picture. Um, hmm. like I said, it does really bring me just just a little bit more hope for the movie. Um, and I, I found it comical. Well, good. It's a comic. <laughs> so uh, no, congrat- not that kind of comical. congratulations. <laughs> I think they got you. No, more it, it, more of is the ha. This movie's gonna be funny. No, as far as representations of the comic books, I love or at least modestly uh, have read. Um, um, I I look to Marvel for more faithful recreations of what I love about their books than DC is right now. DC just doing another thing. Uh, I look at anything DC does as, um, um, you know, this is a great Batman movie, but this is not my Batman. Yeah, this okay. is a great That's Superman a movie. This is a great story they did with Man of Steel, but this is not my Superman. Um, there's actually, if I could toss you guys to another podcast. Oh, geez, what was that? Um, I think it was Back to Work this week on the Five by Five Network. He started discussing. Um, geez, was that the one? Now I'm now I'm worried now. Uh, but they were discussing how how dark. Man of Steel, Batman is, you know, how the, all these DC ones are going to be super gritty going into them uh, for these films coming up, right? Uh, but remember, they did a not gritty version, and it was Green Lantern, and it did not fare so well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I did hear that conversation. I thought I'm beginning to feel like I heard that same conversation on a different podcast. I'm not uh, sure not anymore fun. now because I listen to a lot of shows, and it could have come up on a lot of them. So the, um, to be honest, though. Green Lantern, I understand what they're saying about the bright colors, and even like the, uh, not the last Superman, but the one before that, very bright colors. Mm -hmm. So DC should stay with the bright colors. Batman, I feel like, should have been dark, should have been gritty, but I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna prejudge this movie anymore. No. Because I saw the trailer. See what it is. I mean, we don't know. We honestly, we don't see, we have no proof that DC is gonna do well going across their universe with the same tone like Marvel has been and has proven over the last several years. We have no, we have zero proof of that. We have no examples. We have one movie in this new universe. Period. And a preview. Yeah, so I'm just going to wait and see. I'm going to sit back. But yeah, speaking yeah. of movies that have come out that we can talk about, mm-hmm. The Avengers. The Avengers. Now we do have. Let's let's kick this off with the email from Mad Mike, and this is going to go well. First, uh, general thoughts on the movie before we get into spoilers. 
Did you like the film? There's some debate about this film. All right. So my quick, I, I'm not going to do my ranking reviews uh, thing. We could do that after. But my quick, just general aspect. I like the film. I like the first one better. Oh, really? Yes. I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I, I, I went and I saw it and I enjoyed it. And, um, and, and I will watch it again. And uh, I just take oh, them yeah. in. I just take them in, enjoy them for the moment and move on at this point. Because I'm like, yay, Marvel film. What's next? Um, th- like, that's my attitude about these anymore. This uh, has been the first one, though, that I watched it. And I had that reaction where I was like, I was more emotionally attached to what was going on in Captain America, the second movie. So it went on in the first well, Avengers well, movie. I, I, don't think, I don't think it is possible to become emotionally attached to an Avengers movie because this is the... Um, this is just like reading a Marvel comic, guys. That's exactly this what is I a, said. This is it's just like it because you know, you're like, big event is happening. It's like, all right, this big thing is happening. You see yep. your favorite character. You see Wolverine do this thing over here. You see this person do this thing over here. And for you to get more of that story, you have to go buy a whole nother book than the main series of Avengers versus X-Men, right? Yeah. Uh, or Secret Wars or whatever the story is. That's what this is. You dip into this thing, giant something large and magical happens. You have some tidbits of story going on here, um, but you're going to get a more in-depth story when you get Captain America 3, Iron Man 4, whatever the case may be, right? Like you got, right? Like lots yeah. of crazy stuff happen. Holy crap, we're, we're going too quick to really explore these people and how it's affecting them. And then we have Iron Man 3, that, that dealt with his PTSD about the situation. We get Captain America dealing with the way the world is now. We get Thor dealing with the, the, the fallout and, and the next thing uh, after Avengers. Uh, basically, it was the fallout of, of the alien invasion and, and finding the next threat that's out there that's threatening us. Right. Yep. Um, I mean, th- this is this is the it comes together. Stuff explodes. Now let's go tell a real story in the next three movies. I mean, I, it, it, it's, you know, whereas Guardians is fit to be a self-contained thing, this is not like each of the Guardians had a movie and then they came together and you got less story out of them. It was, it was, it was paced a little more properly. So I, I think, I think by saying, oh, it was enough story, it was enough development, da 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 I was like, well, no, dude, you have like 11 movies of development. This is the thing where stuff blows up. And we got introduced to new characters, and you bought a ticket, um, and uh, and so did everybody else. So, uh, yeah. I mean, that, I mean not to over dissect, but we did also get like our our big climactic moment at oh, the end, sure. where they're like standing their ground at the church. Mm-hmm. So, like, if people, you know, if people are looking for that iconic, like, oh, you know, what are we going to get from that first Avengers movie where Tony starts going up into the wormhole thing with the nuke? Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. like, that's that's technically what we got there. That oh, yeah. Whole oh, yeah. Scene. I mean, we almost blew up the entire world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I the non-spoiler, you know, but I think you can kind of figure that out. I mean, it's kind of, isn't that the plot of every Avengers movie or, or, exactly. or any bad guy plot of an Avengers? Uh, that's why they're together, right? Uh, you know, I forget, I forget who uh, stated this on what podcast. I want to say it was the 404. Mm-hmm. And I want to say maybe it was Ayaz, but kind of along the same lines that you were saying, where these are the movies where we're just going to bring everything together. If you want the more in-depth movies, you can go to those other those other movies for that detail. But I also like the, the the good point that he made was although Marvel seems to be getting to that weird point and a lot of people were complaining about like, oh well, you know, now we have to deal with this super villain, this crazy over the top super villain with these superpowers and we got Thor who's a god and all this, you know, it's like, well yeah, you're going to get that from the Avengers because if it was a minuscule like thing that Daredevil could take care of, you know, <laughs> they wouldn't be involved in that no. because they would decimate. Daredevil. No, that's it. They they get called out for the big threats, right? And I want to yeah. see how they wrap this into because we got a, we did get a, a ramp up at the end of Agents of Shield into this. They're you know, bum bum bum. It's like, oh, we found the scepter, Avengers Initiative, and uh, and we roll right into the movie, right? So that mm-hmm. bridges that together. I want to see what happens when we come back because uh, we'll get into that. We'll get a little bit of spoilers here, but um, but I, I don't know. That, that's generally um, uh, good breakdowns. They have a good discussion about it on Cord Killer Spoiler in Time. I, I listened to today, uh, Inako Almanac, and apparently he had a longer conversation on a podcast called the Income in. Oh no, Inca- incomparable, I, incomparable. I think also on the Five by Five oh. Network. But he defended his slot 
on Inako Almanac because people thought that he hated the movie. And listening to it, I can see how you can think that. He just says it's an okay movie for about an hour and a half uh, <laughs> and talks about the problems with the movie. But there are problems with this movie. I mean, yes. don't get me wrong, but I mean, there's a problem with every Marvel book in continuity. Period, right? Um, oh, yeah. And then also the controversy I, I'm learning about uh, Joss Whedon and some things that 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 he wanted in and out and everything. So I'm kind of curious about it. I'm still kind of catching up with that. So I don't really want to get into that here. That's a conversation for a bar somewhere. I don't know. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but 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 what is this movie? That's what we're talking about. And you know, you saw it. You're going to see it. Let's be honest. That's not the question at this point, right? If you're at all into this kind of movie, unless you're like, no, I'd rather watch, uh, you know, I'd rather watch the Lady movie that's out this week weekend um you know it's just it's not a question right yeah um so uh, let's uh, well, let's kick off the spoilerly part with so we're getting into spoiler zone so turn off the podcast but no, there no. goes the engage little bit of engagement we have um but uh man mike not here but of course he saw it three times this weekend i believe how is that even possible i how you know what i Mm, I don't know. I mean, I I have to go see it. I wouldn't. I might go see it with Ashley, but I definitely want to go see it again. Yeah. And I know. I, I know there is too. the bootleg version, but you I'm know, like, I I don't know. Yeah. Chachi hasn't seen it. Maybe I'll go see it with him. I don't know. You know, if I find some time this weekend, maybe I'll take my mom for Mother's Day. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I took her to see the Lego Movie, and that worked oh. out really well. So we'll see how this goes because I don't think she's seen a single Marvel movie. <laughs> What? What's the guy? What? Why is he made of metal? Why is another guy made of metal? Anyways, um, from from the email and uh, uh, Mad Mike, hello fellow movie goers. Sorry, I couldn't be with you this week to discuss Avengers. However, I will give my thoughts as my email enters the spoiler zone. <laughs> The banter between all the Avengers was spot on, and we got some nice teasers for the future strife between Captain and Tony. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised we were, weren't as strained at the end of the movie, to be to be honest, personally. Uh, I totally agree with that with that point. While I uh, enjoyed the scenes with Banner and Widow, I wish we got a flashback to see how that started. Hawkeye almost stole the show for me, as his backstory was much, much needed as he was really the one the one of the only avengers with something to fight for um and i i'll pause it on that like he was only one to, like him battling with um you know him battling with i'm the guy without powers what am i doing here and his wife like yeah. helping him for moral support um i thought it was really nice and, and needed to be like why is this guy here you know for for those who don't know well yeah it's funny with the uh round table the other uh like after movie podcast or like quick podcasting that we do mm -hmm. um that was the, one of the discussions that came up where i asked like who was the most underdeveloped character or the character that we did not really get much about and i thought it was hawkeye but hawkeye had some very hilarious like commentary that helped push the movie and yeah he was fighting for his entire family exactly so you, yeah, you, it, you it, saw it, the stakes because you kind of yeah. think he's gonna he's like this learn, loner mercenary killer guy, right? Yeah, and you see that no, he has a family. He's dealing with this this the the gravity of everything, right? Uh, I like that we did get Scarlet. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Black Widow's uh, backstory as well. Even though we only got minuscule bits of backstory um, of of yeah. Quicksilver, Scarlet Scarlet Witch, I think that there's going to be time to do that as well. And I think we're kind of really sidestepping the you know not reminding us that they're not mutants and Fox has that that license kind of thing. I think we just like <laughs> yeah, I laughed about that. I'm like these are these are Magneto's kids. I like, see. We killed off Quicksilver so that uh, he can be in the next X Men movie. You know, um, yeah, da, 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 that's how they that's how they that's how they settled their deal you know that uh, that was the conversation between them and fox it's like uh, yeah you can have them uh, just make sure kill 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 the mfr okay uh, just there was an argument between widow and quicksilver of what that question when i posed it and i think i think the basically we came to the point that a lot of people like the um the other quicksilver from the one certainly. that fox owns. certainly i i like this one but I like the I, other. The, the representation on the other one was tremendous, and they had yeah. more fun with the character. Way more fun with the that. character. But I do like this character in the in this movie, and I like the way he did go out. I thought it was admirable. It was good. Um, Widow, I uh, unfortunately, I, I love Scarlett Johansson, but I think Widow and the relationship with Banner that was where a lot of people, especially Widow. Her backstory, we got it. We got to see a little bit of it, but it was so vague that you're kind of like. 
what happened to her? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And it's almost like, tell us more about that. So yeah, I yeah, think you, you kind of want that, that. But it's just enough. It's just enough to kind of show you like, hey, there's some stuff going on here. We really alluded it for like her last four appearances in other people's movies. And and people are calling for them and they keep saying, no, they're, we're not going to do a Black Widow movie. You should, yeah. guys. I mean, I think she's a lot of people are really kind of following this character and, and really kind of dug her since Iron Man 2. So I, what, was that, what was that really uh, I'm I'm gonna call it a really bad movie. I can't remember the name. It came out last year that she she was the lead role in it. Where they were oh, like, well, this, uh, is, Lucy. this is kind of like oh Lucy, yeah. Where there's like this could be the entryway into a Black Widow type uh, movie. Yeah, uh, you know her her action scenes were great, and and your head just watch it and and take out all the story. And, and get a super cut of the fight scenes, and you got your Black Widow movie, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, you do want that. You like, unfortunately, it, this is my worry: is a Black movie would a uh, Black Widow movie would turn into a lecture. That's quite. Remember possible. how that turned out? Yeah. <laughs> so All right, let's continue. I right, continue cool. with the email. Ultron was fantastic. Not as good as Loki in times in terms of villainry, but it's definitely a a one A on the Marvel villain scale. Vision. Grabbed. Mo- oh, wait, wait, wait. Mo- let's stop. Real wait, wait, wait. Quick. Let's okay, yeah, let's talk that. about Ultron. Okay, so um, I, do you agree with that comment? Because I agree with it. You agree with it? I agree too. Um, Ultron, Ultron came too quick. Ultron yes. needed a little more. Um, I agree with wait, this statement on wait. the Anako Almac. Is like, okay, we get that Ultron is like all the bad parts of Tony Stark, but we just kind of stated a move on. And that was a problem with this movie. Things were like, hey, this is the thing that happens and moved on, you know? Yeah. Um, the Thor the Thor pole scene, yes, that was weird. What was the deal with that? And apparently it might be a little bit of the argument between Joss Whedon and Marvel, uh, uh, supposedly, right? Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I liked Ultron. It was fun. I didn't know Ultron was supposed to be a fun character, but... <laughs> Well, if it, um, if it is all the parts of Tony Stark, or t- <laughs> Tony Stark, uh, if it was all of uh, Tony Stark's like uh, personality, right. you would get that, right? But yes, two-hour movie, guys. This went way by too fast. It, it did. It fast. did. Well, there's a lot. They were trying to do so much with this movie, and Stuffing and and in. and that's what it is. This was. You know, and we'll slow down, and we'll get uh, you know, Captain America and and and, and Black Widow uh, 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 driving in a pickup truck, talking about their lives. You know, in the next movie or so, you know, whatever that equivalent is, like we did in 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 Winter Soldier. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, they're just passing, like, hey, did we find that guy yet? Nope. You know, and that's like that's kind of how the comics go. Seriously. Um, yeah. So so they are doing this the Marvel way, and they're not wrong. And I think it's done well for that. So, okay, let's go back to it. Vision grabbed Meow Meow. I'm sorry, Mjolnir. Um, but because, but seriously, Paul Bettany was awesome, and I'm excited for his relationship with Wanda to progress. Uh, really good. You know, him saving her was great, because I know that they get together and get married in the comic books, so there's a lot of allusions to that. We'll probably never get to that point or anything like that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, these were these are uh, they're, they're the B Avengers but they're the important inventor, Avengers. Is Vision and, and uh, Wanda Scar- Scarlet Witch Scarlet because of Scarlet Johansson and Black Widow. I keep mixing them up now. Um, I, I'm That's discovering- a good point, though, for people that weren't big into the comic, especially Avengers, because I didn't get into Avengers till pretty late. Um, that's a good point, though. That like that. Uh, that that's something that came up in the roundtable. That there's a lot of stuff here that alluded to the uh, fanboys like the people that were hardcore avengers and that's something i didn't know about that i thought that's really cool i didn't know that vision and and uh and the scarlet witch eventually get married right right and i never really understood kind of the like wait he's an android but he's a person but he's a robot but what is he you know like i never really got that and you only got like there's a quick scene where you saw him do his face thing too yeah, they didn't get to do too much of that, and it just like it just happened. And even like that scene too, it also like it just happened, you know. And but again, I'm sorry, that's how the comic books are written. Yeah, that's how a story. It's either really quick like that, or there's way, 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 way too much exposition. Go read any Avengers. Go find an Avengers comic from the 80s, my friends. Even worse I than mean, the 70s. Oh, the one, first- of the, one of the great scenes uh, that I agree with you uh, on how like comic books are read, where Thor just comes out of nowhere, throws down his hammer to electrify uh, that casket thing that that basically jumpstarts Vision. That is totally something you would see in the comic book, mm-hmm. where it's like, wait. 
what? Like that was like two comic. That was like you know ten pages ago where they're talking this about. This is Thor usually a part. Th- this is the part where we start talking about mystical and alien things, and I start losing it when I'm reading a comic book. Okay, <laughs> like this. The, seriously, it is. I, I usually cannot read a lot of that stuff because like we just made up these words, and this means this, and it was like, yeah, yeah. you lost me. Um, I, I've what I've. I've read Justice League comics that have just like I what am I looking at here? Why like Flash and Green Lantern have gone back in time how many times and are doing what with these immortals that started the started the entire thing? And it was like, what what's happening here? You know? And and we did dip our toe in that a little bit, and I'm afraid we're gonna get even worse as we go uh into the Infinity War series uh that's gonna end out uh phase three of this uh of the Marvel series, basically, right? Um, but, uh, but no, otherwise it's a good Marvel movie. It's a good movie, you know, um, Mm -hmm. it's not, it's not Shakespeare, but it's a good movie and it has its problems and any of them do, you know, I was really not determined until I saw, um, uh, Samuel L. Jackson sit there for Winter Soldier and say, Hey, this Marvel movie has a plot. It was like, I guess the other ones were a little loose, weren't they? So, um, I mean. It's fine. The, the, how many characters? You had to make them all seem important, and uh, I think it works out. And I think you get everything that you deserve in this one. Yep. So uh, I didn't finish okay. the email. <laughs> well, what's he, what's he say about Thor? He says also, um, I was glad that we were able to get Thor to do some uh, exposition so people know about the stones now. Yeah, I mean, yada yada yada. That I again, guess that helps. Again, but, it was it wasn't really illustrated. It was you know this is kind of an Anako Almanac uh, 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 you know problem with yeah, the movie. We it just, sets up more than next things. Thor movie. We don't show that this thing is a thing. We just said things, and yeah. uh, and there you go. And there's like this, we just reminded you there's going to be a Thor three. Yeah, and basically. Yeah, and and I agree with that. I completely agree with that. But that's kind of the purpose of this movie. You know, it's a chapter in a book. It's not the book. Yes. So, and finally, the end scene. I just wanted Thanos to say the power glove. It's so bad. <laughs> eh. I don't know about that. I thought that was the, probably the worst uh, post-credit whatnot that we've ever had. Yeah. Um, it was just like, oh yay, the gauntlet. Nobody in this theater knows what that is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, oh, okay. No, there's there's geeks in there that know know what it is. Every book. Uh, he finishes off by saying, well, I have uh, to super speed in front of 100 bullets now. But before I go, I do want to say Suicide Squad looks awesome. We already talked about Suicide Squad. Right. And yes, we already explained why uh, Quicksilver dies the way he dies. Yes. Any any other um, issues with this movie? Anything else that really kind of caught your attention um, uh, going into this? I thought I thought it was good. I, I loved it. Yeah, like uh, like I said, um, I will be posting the episode of the roundtable probably, probably in like the next couple days. Um, but the it was good. I got a good mix of people with different opinions, but they were all for the most part fanboys. Good. Um, but I do think that just all, like yes, it was a good movie. Uh, I I do want to see it again because I think I I honestly think I'll appreciate it more yes. the second time. I also had um, a really horrible experience at my theater. So yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Before real quick, wrap real, up. real, real quick. Um, so it was my fault. I wanted to save a couple bucks on this one, so I got the I got like the bargain matinee, which is like between four and five thirty any day at at Carmike. And I fandangoed it, right. and I fandangoed it, and and it's in the, the yuppity part of town and everything. So there's that problem too. Uh, that wasn't so much of a problem this time exactly. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, certain car mics have this where you have a sign that says you know now seating and everything like that. I waited. You know, I got there early. I waited. You know, as I'm supposed to do, because what else are you supposed to do here, right? Um, there's a sign. It's there for a reason. And if I said now seating, went to look, and the place was full. At the point where the upper stadium, like the the stadiumy part of it, there were no two seats next to each other. Jeez. Yeah, that's how full it was. Can I ask which one, without being too detailed? Uh, the uh, South Hills Village the, one. The South Hills, the yeah. one that. One of, by them all. The, pers- the co-worker. Okay, the co-worker I went with. We did. We did not realize that there are two car mics right next to each other. There are. There are. It's. It's weird. Uh, usually the kitty movies end up over at the Galleria. So what and- time? Wait, you went. You went before five. Yeah. Well, it was. It was. It was four o'clock, 
and you know it was a matinee, so everybody fandangled or whatever. You know, uh, I went yeah. to see Lego Movie at, at this time slot before, and it was sold out um, because everybody's wow. trying to trying to get the the, the bargain matinee. Uh, I would typically go either go to um, the whatever the destino is called out in Bridgeville. They actually retrofitted. I love because it's a great old kind of cavernous '80s '90s uh, theater, um, but they just retrofitted the entire thing with digital projectors. So wow. so, but they don't do Fandango. I should have just went there. <laughs> I should have just went there. Um, or I would have done like 10, 11 in the morning. So so you had kids crying in your... in your Yes, and then there was a kid crying for... It felt like, I think realistically, or at least it felt like 15 minutes during the movie. Wow. Like We had kids in my screening, but they were pretty much engaged. And yeah, uh, I think they brought like a little engaged. too young of a kid. And I, you know, it just... I... Yeah, uh, Oh. And why didn't so you leave? Why didn't you just take the kid out? Because you didn't want to miss the movie because you've been waiting for this and you had to drag uh, your kid and you couldn't get a babysitter. See, Thanks for ruining it for the rest of us. That's my one advantage to my wife not liking aliens. <laughs> You're not dragging the kid along, huh? Nope. Like, I will go see this movie with my friends. But no, I mean, yeah, I, I, I broke all my rules for this one and I paid dearly for it. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to Carmike anytime soon. So, or at least that one out there, that's for sure. I'm kind of done with that experience after that. And, and you know what? This happens. I've gone through a cycle where that one's been off my list and then back on, and the other one has been off my list and back on. So, I mean, this is a cycle. Something will happen in the next three years to piss me off at the other one. I won't go back again. Or like the one time we went to saw, see uh, Dark Knight Returns out at Lowe's, and for whatever reason, the theater was all just the audio in the front. Oh. Just like blasting in the front. Um, and there was no surround sound whatsoever. And I was trying to rewatch the movie because I watched it in the Omnimax, and that was a really bad fishbowl, hurt in my head idea. Um, and then the reason I stopped going to Distinta before they retrofitted everything was I went to see the third Harry Potter, and there it was old school projectors, and it was out of focus. Jeez, the entire movie. How <laughs> you've had some very bad luck. Yes, and you know I'm a video guy. Oh man! When my TV broke, I'm like, no, I have to buy another TV. I can't just go back to the two because you don't. This I can't do it. I I'm not like I don't know if this is the thing I'm OCD about because I work with it or whatever. But yeah. um, but it's like I will notice that thing. You know, I noticed that the bulb is at high, half brightness at Southside Works. I <laughs> I noticed. No, you can complain about all of that stuff. I yeah. What I do. <laughs> Listen, I'm the guy that was, that was that felt too gu guilty to op uh, to order a sandwich at the coffee shop today because I felt they were too busy and I didn't want to bother them. Oh. <laughs> this is where I'm at. This is this is this is this is the kind of things that I do. Oh, dude, I, you know, it, yeah, I well, the, the Harry Potter thing. I was like, I should talk the entire time. I'm like, I should, I should go talk to the manager. But then, then what? You know, then I'm missing the film. <laughs> What if they don't give me a refund? You know, you know, it's 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 just one of those things. You know, what the manager doesn't give a crap. You know, it's not like they're Carmike. It's a big company that you know I could call somebody. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's these are my dilemmas. These are my personal dilemmas and ticks. Oh, uh, jeez. All right, uh, real quick because <laughs> we <did, laughs> we've gone like uh, we didn't do any ads this week. But Yay, okay. Avengers! Go slice on. Slice on pizza. No, slice on Broadway.com. Uh, there are friends that are supporting the show. Uh, we got a pizza in here. We got, I, I love so I go when I'm not getting free pizza. Okay. Uh, we went this weekend, had a buffalo chicken. It was to die for. It's amazing. Uh, their gourmet pizzas are, ama are amazing. Missy picked up an extra buffalo chicken salad uh, that she's loving right now. Great fresh stuff. Um, and, and, and they are recognized by the city of pittsburgh they had a slice on broadway day uh, a, a few weeks ago here uh so go please check them out they're supporting the show uh thank them thank you very much and uh let them know that you heard about them on the uh rambling movie minute uh slice on broadway uh on your facebook on your instagram and pgh underscore slice on twitter Ooh. By the way, uh, Wheels is in the chat room as he is loyal supporter of Podcast Day. Um, usually he gets pizza. He's too far out to get uh, slice on Broadway, unfortunately. But in spirit, he is getting pizza typically. Um, but he did say he watched Red versus Blue on Netflix. Um, it's still great stuff. <laughs> I never watched the later stuff, but still, like, I, I rewatched some of the early Red versus Blue and all the old jokes. I even kind of resurrected oh. part of a joke about the tank on our uh, new podcast I'm doing with Will. Of uh, panel ride and wrestling mayhem show this week, so um, go listen to that and uh, let me know if you you recognize what I'm what I'm 
kind of what I'm doing there. So um, that's all I got. Lango? Uh, so real quick. Um, so coming out this weekend, eh, I mean. <laughs> Everybody's going to go watch Avengers again. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Hot Pursuit is coming out with uh, Weatherspoon and. Reese Weatherspoon. The, uh, and- yeah. And the really attractive uh, Latina from Modern Family. Yes, I, don't I keep name. hearing this and have to remember it's not a Need for Speed sequel. Yeah, it does look like they will have some funny jokes, but it doesn't look like it's enough to make me go. I like you talk way. like you're you're analyzing the joke quality of the trailer. I'm like, no, nah, it, it could make me laugh. I don't know. I mean, like, she she's funny in that weird, like obnoxious over the top type thing. Um, and then like with her, the, the way her English sounds, because it's her second language, you know, it, it, it just comes off as their jokes. If you've watched Martin family, there are jokes that are written just for her. And then I like whether, uh, Reese, uh, Weatherspoon. So I think she plays smart roles. Uh, but she has that weird, it, like, it's that weird, like blonde brunette cliche thing, cops, robbers. So I don't know. It doesn't matter. People are going to go see Avengers, right? So, yes. Uh, also, just real quick before we wrap up, this weekend I was so so disappointed by what um, Game of Thrones did. Oh, yeah. And by disappointed, I mean I wish that all of the episodes had leaked. <laughs> Uh, Game of Thrones left me just upset and wanting to watch the next episode as quickly as possible. Mm. By upset, though, I'm not disappointed by the episode. I'm just disappointed that the hour went by really fast. It was freaking amazing, Mike. I should probably I rewatch it because I was definitely like kind of working while I was watching it. So I think I might have missed the gist of a lot that happened. If you um, missed the, if if you, I mean, I know what happened at the me. end. I know what happened at the end. Uh, this this religious faction thing is is very interesting to me. Um, but I was more interested in Silicon Valley, to be honest. And I caught up on the last two weeks of Game of Thrones this week. So, because I was so upset that Game of Thrones ended, I went to watch Silicon Valley. I'm and, really uh, worried. I am really worried about you. I feel like the people that are upset after watching an episode of Game of Thrones are the same people that are in a deep, deep depression the next day at work when the pens lose. Oh no, that's me. <laughs> oh, oh, um, so this is okay. This is connected. Yeah, yeah, no, no. When, uh, whenever any sports team that I am a big fan of loses, I have to go play FIFA and win a game. That's why I like my sports fake, <laughs> and I'm sticking to it. I have to get out of my emotional slump as quickly as possible and remind myself that these guys get paid a lot of money for me to be upset. It's mm-hmm. not worth it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, where can we find you, Sword? All over the place. <laughs> oh, yeah, you I, just I don't know how I launched three new shows this week. <laughs> yeah, how did you do that? I just keep doing them. <laughs> I'm still I trying to figure out what I'm going to finish editing the uh, roundtable stuff so I can post yeah, that. Yeah, um, it just kind of happens. Um, <laughs> but SorgatronMedia.com, if you want to catch up on that stuff, it's the best place to figure out what the heck I'm doing next because I don't know. It just kind of happens. I'm like, ah, maybe we'll start the show, and I have four weeks booked out. So I'm like, oh, shit, they're coming to me. <laughs> So it's it's been kind of fun, but we'll hear about that on Awesome Cast tonight. So, all right, uh, but, but no, uh, other than that, yeah, go check that out. Sorgatron.com, a lot of great conversations on there. Uh, maybe to motivate you to start way too many podcasts um, um, as well, and join our newsletter on there as well. So, so I got nice, and uh, make sure you check out our Facebook group at Rambling Movie Minute, mm-hmm. and uh, check out our our website uh, at Time to Ramble. Hopefully, I have to bug Ashley, and hopefully, I can get Alex on board to start writing some some reviews. But uh, that's that's where we're going to be posting that stuff. Uh, also, that's where you could find the ram uh, the rambling movie minute roundtable uh, uh, special edition, where I'll be posting that. Hopefully, uh, just check my Twitter um, at rambling mango, uh, and I'll 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 tweet out when it's when it's live. But that is a roundtable that we that we do. We just get some friends together and we talk about whatever movie just came out. And the unique thing about that podcast and that experience is we try to do it as soon as we get out of the theater. I like that. So it's it's like very that. fresh, like still on people's minds mm-hmm. before it, before it has a chance to marinate. We're like, Mike, 
I don't know if I really like that movie. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's kind of I like that because that's kind of what we do for Monday Night Raw with the Raw wrap up. Uh, we're yeah, like, yeah. we just saw this thing, and we're either way more excited than we would be the next day, or we're like, what the <laughs> heck was that? You know, I, I love the the pure like. I just turned the thing off, and I'm going to tell you what I think. Um, and and it's uh, I think it's a lot of fun, and, and people yeah. are really kind of responding. It's like Iron that. Man would never be able to take on the Hulk. Come on. <laughs> Oh, oh Hulk Buster, that was so great. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we got to get out of here. We got to go talk tech with the awesome cast. Thank you, Malengo. Yes, yeah. Uh, thank you. That's it for this week's Rambling Movie Minute. Thanks for hanging out with us. And until next week, have a Rambling Movie Weekend. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.